Hello friends, welcome to TechGrenth. So in this session, we will talk about Cloudera data platform. I have seen and it myself uh, also seen uh, many confusion about the naming of Cloudera data platform components or its services. So Cloudera data platform is uh, basically a new platform uh, which is provided by Cloudera after merging CDH and HDP big data technologies, where Cloudera data platform provides new features as well, uh, apart from some of the best components from CDH and HDP. So we'll uh, see a CDP overview and then how uh, all its technologies are connected to each other like CDP private cloud or public cloud and what private cloud offerings are there. So CDP is single platform for two factors. As I said, uh, CDP private cloud and CDP public cloud. Where CDP public, private cloud is basically for on-prem infrastructure and CDP public cloud can be used with the cloud providers, public cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. CDP is easy, fast, and secure enterprise data analytics and management platform where we can perform any type of analytics or manage our data for its end-to-end -end data lifecycle. So we can ingest, manage, and deliver of any kind of analytic workload from edge to AI. What is edge here? Edge means uh, we can get the data from uh, IoT sensors uh, and any kind of sources. And we can uh, basically edge is for IoT or data and AI is artificial, artificial intelligence. So when we get data from IoT sensors, we store the data. We collect the data, we store the data, we transform that, we, and then uh, using the data, we perform machine learning and AI, and that end-to-end edge to AI solution is provided by CDP. Also, when data is within that data lifecycle, we must ensure that we have security and governance for complete data life cycle. So both these functionality for end-to-end -end data life cycle is provided by Cloudera data platform. So basically what is data life cycle here? We collect the data, then we enrich or transform the data. And after transforming, we store the data somewhere in data warehouse from, we use, from there we can build a report on top of that. And then some of the data will be stored for serving purpose to real-time dashboards or websites or those kind of purpose. And then we can use a machine learning and AI for prediction on top of that data. So how the consumer or end user will use the data after this complete data life cycle. So what Cloudera uses, uh, which tech, which uh, naming conventions or uh, which technologies they are using for all these five stages of data life cycle. So for collecting, uh, they called it streaming and data flow where uh, they use NiFi and Kafka. For enrich or transforming, they, uh, they, they called it data engineering, where they use Hive and Spark to transform the data and then store it in a data warehouse for reporting purpose. Then for serving, uh, they use uh, operational database where uh, uh, HBase and Phoenix is getting used. And then at the end for prediction, uh, we, uh, they will be using machine learning and AI. So these are five related technology for those five stages of data life cycle. Then as we saw uh, for security and governance during the data life cycle, we must have something. So Cloudera provided SDX, which is shared data experience for unified metadata schema, security, governance, and migration. 
so all the data which is stored in data warehouse or anywhere that will have metadata and schema that should be secure all the way to complete data life cycle so this shared data experience will provide that functionality now then we uh, as on cdp public cloud we use kubernetes service where we have consistent experience uh, using those kubernetes and uh, experiences be it on public cloud and now uh, private cloud experience and multi cloud combining both public cloud and private cloud i know this can be <laughs> little confusing just now this is just introduction to cdp and then we'll see how those tools or services are collaborated in both private and public cloud platform then we has a self service access to integrated multi function analytics on centrally managed and secured business data all data whichever will be in within cdp platform that will be secured and managed centrally which also called single pane of glass to manage centrally all the data we can have a data lineage for uh, from that single point of glass at single pane of glass and uh, we can also scale up scale down using those kubernetes services for public and private cloud experiences we can scale the data up to petabyte scale we can you uh, that can be used uh, with thousands of users simultaneously and we uh, can also optimize the workloads to reduce our cost even on public clouds we when when there is no processing happening then we can stop or pause the clusters or jobs we can be shut down to reduce the cost on public clouds as well so this was about cdp and how whole data life cycle is managed by cloudera data platform now what is what are all our components are there within cdp how uh, that is the main confusion so cloudera data platform is divided basically in two parts one is cdp private cloud and another is cdp public cloud where private cloud is itself uh, divided into two parts where uh, this is called cdp private cloud base and cdp private cloud data services they are the current name running for those those distributions earlier cdp pvc base uh, pvc is private cloud cd that is, that was called cdp data center and cdp private cloud data services was earlier called experience then it was renamed to plus and now currently it is data services which they are most likely uh, making it equal to public clouds but let's see uh, i'll you will get clear idea how they are uh, they are similar to each other now in cdp private cloud base we have mainly two components cloudera manager and cloudera runtime which is similar to earlier version of cdh uh, where we had a cloudera manager and cdh cluster and now you can understand it like uh, you can you can rename cdh parcels or cdh to cloudera runtime all other things uh, there are a lot of services within the cloudera runtime like we used in cdh earlier uh, but some of those services are used uh, taken from hortonworks and some of from cdh and the mixer of both of those distributions uh, the best services are taken and they are in being used in cloudera runtime like hive 3 impala hue data analytics studio and as spark has been evolved or continuously evolving so uh, spark 3 is also supported now but with cds parcels uh, for version 3.2 then we have zeppelin notebook we can use in in pvc based clusters we can use uh, hbase and phoenix for uh, that uh, serving purpose we saw in last slide uh, 
and uh, then we have kafka uh, where we have different components within kafka now like uh, streams messaging manager streams replication manager schema registry a uh, cruise control kafka connect for uh, cruise control is basically for replicate data replication uh, between uh, brokers and kafka connect is to connect two different services out of kafka to get the data in and to move data out then for the security part and security and governance we have nox ranger and atlas and then uh, data at rest in encryption having a uh, ranger kms and kts as with cdh we were having only kms but that has been replaced now with ranger kms so these were all main services which are included in cloudera runtime but uh, if you want to use another tools or services like nifi and nifi registry we need to have a different uh, parcels or uh, like cloudera flow management that, and then we have cloudera streaming analytics for flink and sql stream builder which is basically used for streaming analytics uh, flink yeah flink is uh, st for streaming analytics but that is a coded uh, it, that has been that need to be coded uh, for to execute the jobs and therefore they introduced sql stream builder where we can just write sql queries and then automatically uh, execute the flink jobs at the back end and we just need to write SQL codes. Then we have CDSW, like we uh, earlier also using that Cloudera Data Science Workbench for machine learning uh, workloads. Then the new tool which introduced in CDP private cloud base or even in whole CDP platform is data visualization, which is also called data viz sometimes. And that is based, uh, only used with cdsw in private cloud based version uh, where it is used for creating dashboards and all those purpose it was uh, earlier available uh, as arcadia arcadia component uh, and that also gives the functionality like uh, some other open source tools like tableau or that looker and some other tools so this was all about uh, CDP private cloud base. And now if you'll we'll see CDP private cloud data services section, where there are mainly four components. If you will compare it to public cloud, that first is data lake and SDX, shared data experience for security, unified security and governance. Then second is management console. And third is the container services or Kubernetes clusters. And the fourth one is experience, which is now called data services. So these are the four main components that you can compare to public cloud. Where when we use data services, the data lake and SDX part will be provided and managed by Cloudera private cloud base cluster. Okay, where we have the same Cloudera manager and Cloudera runtime. We, like in base cluster apart from that when we have cloudera manager already installed and running then we can add one uh, this private cloud base data service there which will give us management console and also uh, the interface to the, the same management console we can connect to a kubernetes cluster which can be installed either with openshift cluster or the open source wrapper uh, which is provided by cloudera now uh, that is ecs called embedded compute services or embedded container services you can see both naming uh, in the documents here and there but now it is called embedded compute services because the compute services are embedded within private cloud based cluster so uh, once we have those then we can create a uh, we can create create environments and on top using those environments we can create data services for different kind of workloads like right now there are only three 
data services are available one is data engineering uh, second is uh, data warehouse and third is machine learning so only these three data services are currently available with the data uh, cloud uh, cdp private cloud data services part then the same data visualization has also been integrated but here we can use it with cloudera data warehouse as well as cloudera machine learning which is an advanced uh, advanced feature or advanced of cloudera data science workbench so these are the main components for data services sanction now for the public cloud as i said earlier we have same management control but now this management control is not provided by base cluster but even it is we can access it through the browser because that is provided by cloudera cloud in the back end and that works as a control plane for all other uh, services or components the second one is sdx shared data experience where when we open management console we'll get different uh, two services there like data catalog and workload manager for uh, troubleshooting and optimize our workloads then replication manager which earlier in uh, hotton works called dlm data life cycle manager and in cdh it was called bdr big data replication then we ne we need to have data lake where we have high meta store to get the metadata for all the data warehouse and high tables and all those and then we have ranger and atlas for uh, permissions and uh, security and data lineage part so that we collectively uh, cre create a data lake and using that data lake okay uh, we can e we can create either data hub clusters or data services so data hub clusters are basically uh, the cl cloudera runtime installed on cloud vms on any public cloud aws azure or google cloud those are like uh, we create and we create instances on those public clouds and then on using those instances we install cloudera runtime as data hub and data hub uh, we'll discuss uh, in next uh, slide but data hub are just like a cloudera runtime and they have a uh, pre-built uh, cluster configurations and cluster templates using those we can create data hub clusters then we have same uh, data services which earlier called experiences but now here we have five kind of uh, data services for different kind of workloads first is data flow to get the data within the cdp platform then once data we got the data we use data engineering cluster to enrich the enrich the and transform the data using spark and airflow then uh, once the data is transformed and enriched then we'll store it to data warehouses like hive or impala in virtual using virtual warehouses then we can uh, use we can also use operational database where we have uh, low latency workload requirements and uh, re real time real-time workloads then we have machine learning machine or cml or machine learning workspaces for machine learning workloads and after this we have the same data visualization and that will work also cdw i mean uh, cloud data warehouse cloud era data warehouse and cloud era machine learning services so this was all about uh, how cloudera data platform is divided into public or private cloud and which all services are used in which cloud so i hope uh, this will clear uh, today for you uh, everything that which services used in which cloud so now the latest version the main thing uh, the latest version of which services currently running so if we will see for cloudera data platform private cloud base the currently uh, currently running version is 7.1.7 and for data services it is 1.3.3 
and for public cloud it's for a data hub public cloud is 7.2.12 so these are the three latest versions currently running for cloud era data platform as in feb 2022 so now uh, let's as we see in the last slide uh, there are a lot of similarities between private cloud data services and public cloud so here i have just made this uh represent visual representation so it might be easier to understand uh, the difference between the, the two so first uh, if we'll consider this image as a public cloud so here we have management console uh, where uh, the identity user management orchestration and all other operations are performed and from this management console uh, we have another options uh, there uh, like data catalog replication manager workload manager as i uh, as i saw and uh, here using uh, in from the management console we need to create environments different environments on public clouds any of the public cloud we can create those environments and uh, on top of those environments we need to create data lakes and those data lakes will be used by data hub clusters or data services data hub clusters can be of different type like flow management streams messaging streams streaming analytics data engineering data mart real time data mart operational db with sql or data discovery and exploration these kind of data hub cluster uh, having this uh, cluster templates and cluster configurations already stored or already available in a management console where we can, which we can use to create data hub clusters which type of services and which type of cluster configurations are available i'll show you in next slide then we have a uh, data services where uh, as i told we have five kind of data workload services like data flow data engineering data warehouse operational db and machine learning so these are built on uh, cloud kubernetes clusters and uh, data hub clusters are built on cloud virtual machines so this was about public cloud so if we look for private cloud data services we do not need that uh, sdx part we, because that sdx and data lake part will be provided by base cluster and this data hub clusters and other two data services like data flow and operational database will not be available with a private cloud data services so only three data services are available data engineering data warehouse and machine learning and so now cloud era uh, cloud era manager and cloud era runtime collectively within pvc base cluster will provide the sdx and data lake facility for data lake we can use either hdfs or ocean for object storage then this these data services uh, instead of building on kubernetes cluster in public cloud now they will be created on top of either openshift cluster or ecs cluster which is embedded compute services so this was about how uh, these services are Uh, look i mean assigned or can be used on public cloud or data uh, private cloud so now as i saw uh, i mean we have public cloud private cloud versions which are the current versions the highlighted or bold one like uh, we can see 7.5.4 for cloud era manager on base cluster and cloud era runtime of 717 is the current version running and for the data services the latest version in 1.3.3 and all other versions are the older versions which you might be using or if you want to upgrade or do a perf or newly installed you might go for one last version and those uh, i mean you can consider any of these versions because all those are supported but for data services if you want to use 1.3.1 or 1.3.2 or 1.3.3 you must have seven uh, this cloud era manager version 751 or 754 at least with cloud era runtime 
six or seven one seven. For the public cloud part, uh, we have Cloudera runtime version seven dot two dot twelve and the Cloudera manager seven dot five dot two. So these are the latest version running for public cloud data hub and you can see in the table there are different cloud error runtime and cloud error manager version but on the right side of table as a note it is mentioned the cloud error runtime have same version of cloud error manager versions for all these versions like cloud error runtime 720 710 700 and all these so these are the versions which you might have seen or you will see it till today and the, with the latest versions now the next is uh, as i said uh, data hub cluster con default configurations which are available to create data hub clusters are basically for flow management streams messaging streaming analytics data engineering data mart data mart operational database with sql and data discovery and exploration so what is available for flow management so flow management cluster definition is available within cloud era data flow and these three uh, first three flow management streams messaging and streaming analytics both all three are available through cloud era data flow package or uh, cluster definition and where we have light duty and high heavy duty cluster definitions light duty is basically single instances of all the services included in cl those cluster types and the heavy duty will be having high availability for those so template cluster template will be flow management light duty and heavy duty and the services will be nifi and nifi registry for flow management for streams messaging as i said uh, this is basically for kafka and the streaming uh, part I mean, to get the data from Kafka using Kafka and its related components. So again, uh, for this as well, uh, for streams messaging, we have light duty and heavy duty, which can be installed on AWS, Azure or GCP. And then uh, the same uh, template name will be streams messaging, light duty and heavy duty, which includes services like Kafka, schema registries, streams messaging managers, streams, replication manager cruise control but but uh, kafka connect will not be available here that is only available with cloud error runtime on base clusters then we have streaming analytics streaming analytics also have light duty and heavy duty version for all the three public clouds aws azure and gcp but here uh, we have streaming uh, analytics light duty uh, where we have the heap state backend is used by default and for heavy duty rogues db will be the state backend to be used by default so we'll see uh, this heap state backend around rogues db backend uh, in future sessions um, when we'll be discussing streaming analytics or flink and sql stream builder so these will have services include like hdfs yarn kafka this kafka will not be used for production this is different than streams messaging kafka so this is just to have the connectivity uh, of flink with another services from where we can get the data for sampling and other purpose to check the flink is working or not or those kind of testing but not for the production and uh, sql stream builder as i said earlier we can run sql query on uh, using sql stream builder to run our flink jobs and the cloud era runtime supported for these services are 722 version and 7 to 12 is the latest one then we have data engineering uh, data hub cluster type where we have three kind of uh, cluster definitions like data engineering for data engineering data engineering high availability and data engineering for spark 3 and this is also on all the three public clouds as aws azure and gcp then the same uh, we have three 
cluster template type, data engineering, data engineering, high availability, and Spark 3, and the services which are included in that HDFS, YAN, JuKeeper, Spark, Hive, Uzi, Levy for uh, remote connectivity to run Hive queries, and then oh, same Hue. As we saw, we run Hive and Impala queries from Hue. Zeppelin is just like notebook to run the Spark jobs. Then we have Data Analytics Studio to run Hive queries and but in uh, with the Spark 3 a data engineering template, Hue, Uzi, and Hive Warehouse Connector will not be supported. Then we have Data Mart and a real time Data Mart. Data Mart are basically Impala clusters uh, where we have this Data Mart available for AWS, uh, available only on AWS and Azure, not on GCP as of now, and the same real time Data Mart as well. And uh, the services which will be included here, HDFS, Hue, and Impala for Data Mart, and for real-time Data Mart, Kudu will also be included with Spark and Yam. Then operational database with SQL, and operational database with SQL is also available on AWS and Azure, uh, where the template name is also operational database with services like HDFS, Zookeeper, Nox, HBase, and Phoenix. And the last one, uh, data discovery and exploration. As of now, we were using Solar as Cloud Era Search, but now it is uh, available with data discovery and exploration data hub cluster type that is available on AWS and Azure only as of now. And the services which will be included in this HDFS, YAN, Zookeeper, Solar, Spark, and Hue. Solar and Spark will be the main component to use at Cloud Era Search or data discovery. There are uh, two points to note here. Uh, operational DB and stream messaging can be used as disaster recovery instance for on-prem clusters. Like uh, if we have operational DB like HBase or uh, Kafka running on on-premises clusters, then we can create an operational database and stream messaging cl clusters for those services on public cloud as a disaster recovery. And Cloudera, as I said uh, in the beginning, Cloudera data flow collectively delivers flow management, stream messaging, and streaming analytics cluster definition for installation of on public cloud using Data Hub. So that was all about Data Hub cluster default configuration. Apart from this, we can also uh, have our custom custom configurations as well for these templates, and then we can use them. Uh, or reshare them along with the different clusters using image catalog. And also we can uh, run custom scripts, which are not available or to automate these cluster creation, data hub cluster creation. So uh, yeah, that was all about uh, CDP Cloudera data platform. I hope uh, you would get better idea today uh, about how Cloudera data platform for private cloud and public cloud are uh, in use uh, which all services are in uh, there in either private cloud base or private cloud data services or public cloud so all those confusion i hope it would have been clear now and if still uh, you have any doubt or any confusion you can just write in the comments and i'll i'll try my best to solve your confusion so thank you thank you so much for joining and keep learning and keep watching thank you